Oh. I'm never going to finish law school at this rate. I can't believe I got to take this stupid class again. Like there's anything left of my brain after last semester. Hey, summer school hasn't even started yet. I just want to be prepared. Look, I'm sure you remember a lot more from last semester than you think. Obviously, I didn't remember much then or I wouldn't have flunked. You better get going or we're going to be late for Andrew's dedication ceremony. Oh, Ben, I can't. There's, there's no way. Oh, come on. You've been in those books all morning. I said no, okay? Oh. Rachel, what's going on here? You're the one who asked me to come to this thing. Look, there's no more time. But this just isn't making any sense. Something's wrong. Now, will you please tell me what it is? You hit a lot of flack when you bought the AIDS quilt here at the Landview a few years back, Reverend. Do you expect the same kind of opposition this time around? No, no, not at all. The Carpenter Foundation is being created to help those in need, and I don't know anyone who'd be opposed to that. Right. But if you'll all be seated, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions after the dedication, all right? Thank you. Hi, thank you for coming. Hi, thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh, Blair, <laughs> you made it. I wasn't sure. Well, we Kramer girls, we have to stick together. You were there to help me with Melodora to get started, and I'm here for you. Oh, oh I'm so glad you came. Mm. I know how much Sloan meant to you and how important this is for Andrew. I wouldn't have missed it. Oh, I... Thank you for coming. You know, I am very impressed. The Carpenter Foundation for the Prevention of AIDS. Is this something that Andrew and his father no. had planned together? No, we had no idea. We didn't know about it until Sloan's will. Oh. That's why it's uh, such a surprise. Andrew's brother, William, died of AIDS, right? Yeah. That's what makes it so special. Mm. Sloan had the hardest time recognizing that William died from AIDS or, or that he was even gay. I think setting up this foundation is Sloan's way of making peace with his son. Blair? I... Uh, I wasn't expecting you to be here. Well, Andrew, you know how I always love to come out for a good cause. Okay, well, I'll, I'm gonna keep that in mind when we have the church carnival next time. <laughs> well, I don't think you should get carried away here. <laughs> uh, are, are you all set? Yeah, I did tell you I'm holding off a little bit for Vicky. Do you have any idea where she could be? No, no, I was thinking the same thing about my mother. Oh, Dorian, is she, is she coming? Yeah, maybe it's a good idea that uh, Vicky isn't here after all. Oh, well, if my mother were coming, she would have made her grand entrance by now. Well, they could be stuck in traffic. Or... Let's hope not together. Oh. <laughs> Where's Todd? You know, I don't know. He promised that he was going to be here. Maybe he's just um, running late with the rest of them. Whoa, whoa. Where do you think you're going? I'm going upstairs. I'm in a hurry. No, you don't belong here. How'd you get by that police line outside? Look, I'm looking for Clint or Kevin Buchanan, the owners. Have you seen him? I haven't seen anybody since we cleared out the building. You cleared out the building, why? The building's had an arson threat. Oh, my goodness, Todd. Fancy running into you here. Uh, listen, I think we better go. Look, I'm not going anywhere, all right? I'm not going to be a fall guy for you and your, your pal, Vicky. Well, look, anyone you two are looking for is either outside or safe at home. The banner offices are empty. No, they're not. Hello, Mr. Floyd. Hello, Leo. Uh, the people you're looking for, Mr. Buchanan and his son, they're both still up there. No, I'm not Vicky. You were so right about that, Clint. And if I were you two boys, I'd start getting used to the idea that she's never coming back because Vicky is never... I don't think so. I don't think so, officer. Now, I'm warning you. You move one little finger. I'm gonna shoot the cowboy. Mom, please don't do this. I'm not your mother. Don't even say that. Take it easy, son. Oh, you're so wonderful, Clint. You're so wonderful protecting everybody. The kids, Vicky. That's right. Yeah, problem is you get yourself killed that way. Put the gun down, Vicky. I'm not Vicky. My name is Tori. Tori. Got it? And if you think I won't pull this trigger, Try me.
Kramer cousin. Are we the most beautiful women in Lambview or what? <laughs> hello, Kelly. <laughs> yes, hello, stranger. Can't believe you're still in town. I haven't seen you since you moved in with my mother. Did you miss me? Yes, as a matter of fact, we did. We didn't miss the rock and roll, I'll admit that, but... <laughs> Wait, it's what you always wanted, is it everything that you expected? And then some. Oh, really? Living with Aunt Dorian is experience far beyond the mundane middle-class world. <laughs> that Andrew and I live in. <clears throat> Just remember, Kelly, that it's only temporary until River gets over the chicken pox. And how is the little love struggling along? Oh, the doctor says he should be all better in a few days. Great. Uh, Cassie, could, could we please have you for a, a photograph over here? Duty calls. <laughs> Great. Back to the dungeon. Oh, come on, Kelly. Life at the rectory can't be all that bad. There is no way I could survive that medieval monastery now. I mean, not after coming from that cosmopolitan world with David and Aunt Dorian. Have you seen him? I mean, them. Are they here yet? Uh... I don't think so, but I wouldn't be surprised if Dorian snubbed this little shindig. Now, why would she do that? Because Sloane and Vicky are the ones that pushed Dorian to be put on trial for Victor Lord's murder. I now think that she would want to sit through a dedication ceremony to honor Sloane. Well, I don't blame her, especially if Father Dweeb is the master of ceremonies. <laughs> you know, I might as well just cast myself into the pit of purity now. I mean, the rectory doors just clang shut. Or maybe that pit can wait. I will be back. Hello. Hi. I couldn't help noticing that um, you were staring at me across the crowded room. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just... No, no, no. Don't be sorry. Sometimes fate just walks right in and takes over. <laughs> I'm so sorry that took so long. I had quite a time finding a place to park no, the car. No, it's okay. I was just getting acquainted with... Kelly. Uh. Do you two know each other? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but... Do you know the carpenters? Yeah, uh, very well. Um, let's just say I'm uh, Andrew's brother-in-law. But Andrew doesn't have a sister. Oh, yeah. oh I get it. <laughs> Andrew's brother, William, and you. Yeah. You're... Jonathan. Uh, how do you... Um... I'm Cassie's cousin. Uh -huh. They gave me the whole lowdown on Andrew's family months ago. So if you're Jonathan, who are you? Well, he would be with me. Right. <laughs> of course. I mean, you guys make a perfect couple. You look great together. Jonathan. Hey. Ah. Oh, I am so glad you could make it. Well, it's a great day for the carpenter. Well, it wouldn't be the same without you. Uh, yes, it has been too long. Uh, well, come down and visit us in Baltimore. Bring that baby so he can see his Uncle John. Oh, I promise. Uh, we will. We okay. will. Um, I see you've met my cousin Kelly. Yes, we certainly have. <laughs> and this is Shane. Oh, we have heard so much about you. Well, same here. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Listen, I, I hate to rush off, but they've been giving me the signal to begin, uh, so... Okay, uh, Kelly, would you please take Jonathan and Shane and show them where they're to sit? Sure. Why not? And we'll see you both afterwards, right? Definitely. Okay. Okay, right this way. Uh, <laughs> so, you nervous? No, not really. I feel like like they're both here. I've got my my dad on one side and my brother William on the other. Ah, well then, how could you lose? Yeah, I do feel a little strange starting without Vicky. I mean, where could she be? Well, Andrew, she just got out of the hospital. Maybe she just didn't feel like she was up for it. Cassie, you know Vicky. She says she's going to do something. She does it. I mean, I'm worried about her. I hope she's all right wherever she is. You sure it was Clint Buchanan who went up? Mr. Buchanan and his son Kevin. And there was a police officer with them. Why didn't you stop them? They own this place. But when they didn't come right back down, I started to get a little worried. Hey, what's the word? Any evidence of arson? Well, my men are almost through checking the basement. So far, enough. Sounds like somebody's idea of a sick joke. Well, it's okay to go up now, right? It's safe? No. Uh, not so fast. I've got a few more questions for Mr. Parker here. You two stay right here until I get back, and then maybe we'll think about going up. Uh, 
Todd, why can't you just leave it alone? What are you following me around for? Because I want to make sure you're not going to tell any vicious lies about me, especially to Clint. Look, if there's any vicious lies floating around here, they're yours, okay? I'm just here to tell the truth about how my wacko sister's the one that's been putting the screws to the banner this whole time, and how she's the one who gave me the ammunition to destroy the banner myself. Fine, even if that's true, what does it have to do with me? Look, Vicky's got some sick number going on with her family, and you're in on it. I am not. Well, tell it to the judge. Why are you doing this to me? Think what it'll do to Blair. What? Oh, we're family. I don't believe you. You're as big a nutcase as Vicky is. Mom, this is crazy. I told you my name. It's Tori. Officer, put down your weapon. Mrs. Carpenter, I don't think this is what you want to be. No one is asking you to think. Just do it. I'm not kidding. Slide it over to me, on the floor. That was very good. So, uh, Tori, that's your name? That's right. I am definitely not your sleazy friend, Nikki Smith. No, no, you're very different from Nikki Smith. You're much harder. No. I'm much tougher. Nikki is just for show. She's better at playing Vicky than you are. No, she's not. I had you guys plenty fooled. At first. But it didn't take me long to figure out that something was off. Yeah, right. You're so smart. Well, smart enough to know that Vicky had to be hit pretty hard to splinter like this after all this time. Yes, she was. I'm surprised she lasted this long. What was it, Tori? What happened to Vicky? You know something? You don't need to worry about Vicky anymore because she's never coming back. Oh, Vicky always comes back. Not when I'm in charge. She came back to save her daughter. She wouldn't let Jessica die in that fire. She came back then. I said forget come... it. But if I can just show her... You're not showing anybody anything because I'm in charge. Not you, not your son, not his girlfriend. You know, I've been running things for quite a while now. None of you had a clue. Just who do you think tipped old Todd off about the Landview PD, hmm? Cops sell guns to kids. Great headline. That was you. Afraid so, Blondie. And the night the presses were blown up? Just before the 60th anniversary issue was supposed to be run? I walked in on you. With my hand in the cookie jar, you never even knew it. And the fire at Landfair. Oh, yes! Yours truly. And you were gonna do the same thing right here at the banner. You bet I was. I was about to light the torch when you walked in. But that's okay. No one is gonna stop me now. And I'm finally gonna finish what I started. One Life to Live, brought to you by Monistat 7, the number one choice of women, the number one recommendation of doctors. So, we're just going to blow off Andrew's dedication sign. I'm sorry, okay? I didn't know I was going to flunk and have to retake this class again. And I'm sorry, too, and I know how down you feel about this. But you... I can't believe it. I mean, how could I be so off? I was sure I aced that exam. Did you do like I said and talk to Dr. Kramer about rechecking your final? Wouldn't do any good. How do you know? You say you're sure you aced it. Professors make mistakes too, you know. There's no mistake, okay? I, I checked it already. Just face it, your fiance's a loser. Will you stop putting yourself down? You are not a loser. You're brilliant and beautiful and a whole lot more. You, Let's forget the ceremony. We'll both stay home. No, no. I don't want you staying home on account of me. Look, it's no big deal. Yes, it is. Sheila, <laughs> Sheila will have a fit if you're not there. She wants to spend as much time with you as she can before you go off to London. Besides, I can't concentrate with you here. I hate the message. It's 
just not the same without you. I mean that. So if somebody gives you trouble about you cutting them off, you just let me take care of them. That's right, because he's the boss man. Perez, what are you doing here? I told you I'd be in touch. What's the matter, man? You got a problem with me coming down here? Because if you got a problem, I can leave right now, all right? Excuse me. Now, didn't I tell you about going off like that? A man exercises self-control. You know, RJ, I went out of my way to set this whole thing up. But if you don't want it, all right, I'm gone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean the meeting with that guy we talked about? The meeting with the guy who sold me my piece. I don't know, man. Sounds like you're telling me that you don't want me. Javier, my man, listen, I'm just looking out for you. Don't you worry about me, all right? I got protection. Yeah, but the thing about protection is knowing when it's appropriate to use it, not just for kicks. <sighs> when is the meeting set to take place? Tomorrow. The details right here. One more thing, RJ. Don't be late, all right? <laughs> Guy's a little shaky. <laughs> you done good, Javier. Yeah. Why don't you show me how good? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brad. There you go. <laughs> Later, right. my man. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's up? I got another job you might be interested in, but uh, you got to give me a minute, OK? That's cool. All right, man. Come on, make yourself at home. Ronnie, take care of Javier here for me. I'll be right back. You take your time. <laughs> you can start a fire here, Tori, but you'll never get away with it. Want to bet? Too many people know about it now. That's right. The arson squad was already searching the building downstairs when Andy and I walked in. We got squad cars right out front. You'll never get out of the building. Just shut up. I can't even hear myself think anymore. We just want to help. I don't want your help. Sit down. Well, what are you going to do? Let them go. Please, please. What do you take me for? Officer, get your handcuffs out. Mrs. Carpenter, you're only going to make things worse. Yeah, right. Just do it. Put the keys on the desk over there, right there. What your husband said is right. You're never going to get away with this. <laughs> you know something? He's not my husband. <laughs> you two, right here on the floor. Uh -uh. Dad! Don't even think about it. Get out, right now. I want you to handcuff yourselves to the inside bar on that desk. Do it. Go ahead. Done? You, Mr. Cowboy, up in the supply closet. You don't have to do this. And you don't want anyone to get hurt. So you shut up and you go. years old, I remember my uh, brother William guiding my fingers across the keys of our piano. 
teaching me the very easy part to heart and soul. That was his first gift to me. And later, when I was, uh, you know, 13, trying to learn the saxophone, and feeling uh, very uh, self-conscious about these, these clumsy hands of mine that just couldn't do anything right, he gave me the gift of laughter. He taught me to laugh at myself. Through these and, and uh, so many other gifts, my brother prepared me to be a man. And I longed, I longed for the day when I would be older and able to repay him. But the day never came because the gift that my brother wanted more than anything, anything in the world, was a gift that I just couldn't give him. He wanted my father's love, a love that was withheld for years, too many years. But my brother William died of AIDS, and my father lost a son forever. Today, with the Carpenter Foundation for the Prevention of AIDS, Sloan Carpenter gives the gift of love to his son, William, and to all of you. Now, we know that a cure for AIDS is still far off, but the rate of infection is increasing in both the straight and the gay community, and it's our young people that are most at risk through the university, through our hospitals and outreach programs. The efforts of this foundation are going to be as broad and as indiscriminate as this disease that we seek to conquer. AIDS can be prevented. Prevention will be the creed, the commitment of this foundation. Through his legacy, Sloan Carpenter entreats us all to cherish each other, to let no prejudice estrange us, and to let each and every one of our fellow human beings afflicted with this terrible disease, to let each of them know every day of their lives that they are deeply, truly loved. You the last two in the building? I don't know. My mother and my father may still be here. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? Look, do you have any idea where your parents were headed? I don't know. They might have gone down the back stairway, the one that leads out into the alley. Right. Let's go. Watch out for the woman. She's armed. Sorry. It's all right. Just as long as they find them. Wonderful. Your father, William, would be so proud. Well, I hope they heard it. Oh, they did. Kelly, hi. I'm surprised you're still here. Yeah, well, it wasn't so bad. Uh, Alyssa, I'm gonna grab Jonathan before they go. I'll okay. be right back. Okay, sure. Sure. Listen, um, what you said up there before, it's real important. Well, I'm glad you thought so. I mean it. You know, I always kind of thought that you were a real downer. But after you talked about your brother and your father, I don't know, it's just, I think for the first time, I looked at you and I didn't see the guy who was always on me about making my curfew. Yeah. Well, Kelly, thank you for being able to say that to me. I'm really sorry that William and your father aren't here today. I think I would have liked William. Oh, you would have, and I'll tell you something. He definitely would have liked you. So, I guess that you're all alone in the world like me, right? Well, I've got Cassie, and I've got River. 
so do you, Kelly. Andrew, Jonathan and Shane have to get going. Uh, well, we just wanted to say goodbye and thanks. And with what you said today, you really brought William back. Uh, it definitely helped me get to know him better. I wish you didn't have to go so soon. Well, maybe next time. You know, you guys are welcome here any time. Both of you. Thank you for that. Um, well, look, I'll go get the car, and I'll meet you outside. All right. Keep up the good fight. Thank you, Shane. So, you're happy? Uh, <laughs> Shane's been good for me. Yes, we can see that. I didn't think it was possible. After losing William the way I did, the way we all did, I lost a little bit of myself. I didn't know if I'd ever find it. Well, you did. Uh, you have. No, he's still there, though. Every day. It's strange. I think about William, I never think of him sick. It's his laughter. It's his laughter. I always think of him laughing. Sometimes I think, I swear I can hear him laughing in my ear. I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, I feel that way too. Anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Sheila. Glad I found you. Yeah. Did you hear that dedication speech? I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. Caught the tail end of it. Pretty heavy stuff. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Where's Rachel? Thought she was coming with you. Yeah, so did I. But I couldn't pry her away from the books. Books? Aren't classes over for the summer? <laughs> not for her, they're not. What do you mean? What happened? Rachel had a little setback. You heard my man, RJ. He said for you to take good care of me. Which is just what I'm doing now. What kind of soda do you want? The kind that's got scotch in it. Look, you show me proof, I'll start pouring. Come on, cut me a break, all right? I could lost my wallet. Well, I could lose my job, and RJ could lose his license. Now, you got a problem with that, you take it up with him. Otherwise, sit back and uh, have a soda. Thank you. On the house. Hey, Rachel. Are you here, RJ? Yeah. Is he in? Sure. Just have a seat. I'll go tell him you're here. Thanks. Hey, you looking for someone? No way out, Tori. You're wrong. The building is surrounded. You won't get past the police. Shut up. Let it go. Let Vicky get the help that she needs. I'll kill you, I swear it. No, you won't. Oh, no, you don't think so, huh? Just put the gun down. You are forgetting who you're dealing with, mister. Now, I'm Tori. I'm not Nikki, and I'm definitely not Vicky. And the little head games you play are not going to work on me the way they do on them. Don't push your luck. Thank you very much. You know, I am really sorry that Todd wasn't here, because this would have been a nice story for the sun. Oh, you know what? You can write it, and I'll take this. I'll take this. A press release? Uh, <laughs> I really don't think it's the sun's style. I like it. It's brilliant. Well, all right, but don't go off board. Well, I'm serious, and I can see why Todd wanted you to come right for him with the sun. He, uh, told you about the job offer. Mm hmm And he was disappointed that you turned him down. Well, to, to tell you the truth, Blair, uh, I really don't see myself writing for the sun. Well, I, look, I understand your feeling about maybe writing for the banners competition, but Cassie, come on. You should not let all this wonderful talent go to waste. Well, I'm not. Well, great. You take the job, then. No, no. I, I've signed up for a two-week journalism seminar in Boston. It starts in a few days. Oh, Cassie, that's wonderful. Wait. What about Andrew? What about Andrew? Well, Todd seemed to feel that Andrew was, well, not really behind you working. <laughs> Andrew has been very supportive, and he and River are going to be just fine. I'll be coming home on the weekend because I'm the one who can't stay away from my boys for more than a few days, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like it's all set then. Yeah, I guess it is. I'm so proud of you. 
Hey, I had to do something to keep up with you. Oh, I think you're doing just fine. You know, Blair, when you lost the baby, I was really worried. I couldn't help but think about how hard it was for me to get over losing my little William. I just put all my energy into taking care of Andrew and River and making sure that all their needs were met, that I forgot about me and my needs. But you, you just jumped on the horse and made Melador take off. Well, you know, you just gotta keep moving. Yeah, well, it's time I did the same thing. And there's no doubt about that. I can't believe she failed. It would make sense if Rachel hadn't been studying her heart out. Tell me about it. What happened? She... I don't, I don't know. I guess when it came down to the final final, she just got nervous. Or <sighs> Poor thing. Oh, and she worked so hard. Hey, keep this to yourself. Rachel wants to be the one to break it to Hank. Well, tell her not to lose too much sleep over it. Oh, uh, Hank is so wrapped up in this new case that... Most likely, she'll escape that drill sergeant. Yeah, and most can't. likely, Sheila, when Rachel missed Moot Court, the way Hank went off, I, I, I just I just don't want to have to deal with that, all right? He can be a teensy bit overbearing. Oh, yeah, kind of like Mount Everest falling on you. I can almost understand why Rachel gets so uptight. It, it worries me. We don't need both of you stressing out. I'm, I'm seriously considering forfeiting my year in London. Ben Price, I will have your head if you even think about giving up that I fellowship. I hate the thought of leaving Rachel alone, especially now. So you think sacrificing your own career is going to help her? Let me tell you something. This is the opportunity of a lifetime, Ben. And if you don't want to think about yourself, at least think about Mama. You think about how proud she'd be right now. Her son going to London, one of ten young neurosurgeons in the whole world. All right. You've worked too hard to give this up. You hear me? Hey, things might be tough for Rachel right now, but she's stronger than you think. Excuse me, but I'm waiting for someone. A lady like you shouldn't have to wait. My name is Javier Perez. No offense, Javier, but I'd like to be alone. Uh, I don't think that's such a good idea, being alone. Not for someone so sweet. You know, there's a lot of scum around this place. Is there? Yep. And I wouldn't want to see you get hassled by anyone. Then stop doing it. Oh, no, baby, I I'm here for your protection, you see? If you hang with me, nobody's gonna mess with you. You're pretty sure of yourself. I got reason. You know, me and the owner, we are tight. You and RJ? You know him? Yeah. Actually, we're pretty tight, too. Okay. He's my uncle. Oh, Rachel. I think I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long. It's okay. I was. I'm a little surprised I... to see you. RJ, we're missing a case of that Puerto Rican rum you ordered. Uh, get Fisher on the phone. I'm sorry. So what's up? Oh, not much. I was wondering if I could talk to you. Sure. I got Fisher. Right now? Look, if you're busy... I... No, no, I'm never too busy for my favorite relative. But could you give me a minute to clear this up? Uncle's a very busy man. I myself am waiting to see him too. It looks like you and I both have some time to kill. How about a drink, huh? I'll pass. Oh, come on, baby. Don't be so hasty. Look, just tell my uncle I couldn't wait. But I can. Check the building. No sign of anyone. Uh, what about the alley out back at the parking lot? Yeah, we're checking it. Look, there is no time to waste. All right, my dad went after... She's very disturbed. We'll find them. Let's go. Let's go.
They will find them, Kevin. Look, if she was gonna, she was gonna shoot, she would have done so. I know. I know. So you're looking for the big scoop, huh, Todd? Ought to sell a lot of newspapers with this one. Came by to return these. The banner files. Where did you get these? Three guesses. See, your mom thought they might help the son. Another coffin now for the banner. God, this is just unreal. Now, look, Kevin, I know you don't want to believe me about your mother. I believe you, Todd. You do? Yeah. Thanks for returning them. I gotta go. Wait, there's one more thing. Todd, please. The poor man wants to go look for his mother. What is it? Kevin, your father's life is in danger. You're going to stop for something like this? Will you shut up, Dorian? Go ahead. All right, your mother called me down by the docks to give me the dirt on the banner. Only when I got there, she wasn't alone. Todd. This one was with her. Big secret meeting. So don't say I never did anything for you. What were you doing with my mother, Dorian? Kevin, I'll explain later. You explain now. Excuse me. But you have to go look for your parents, and I just have to go. It will never let this go on anywhere. Not until I get some answers. It won't happen again. RJ, uh, Rachel says she had to go. You met my niece? Yeah, man, hey, she is fine. That girl's fly, real sweet. Yeah, too sweet for you. She's out of the league, Javier, terminally. What's the matter? I'm not good enough for her, man. Rachel has got a nice, clean, young doctor at home just waiting for her, and nobody's gonna mess that up. Now, you stay clear if you know what's good for you. Well, that's cool, my man. Don't you worry. I got no problem, man. No problem. I'll go put a call out to Joey and see if Vicky, Tori, if she went back to the carriage house. Thanks, Andy. Yeah. Now, what's going on, Dorian? Why were you with my mother today down at the docks? Kevin, why are you taking Todd Manning's word for anything? Why would he lie? Are you serious? Given his past history? His history's not what I'm concerned about. The only history I'm concerned about is yours. You hate my mother. No. You've always hated her, and now all of a sudden, it's like you can't get enough of her. You know, you're popping up everywhere. At the hospital, at land fair, even here at the banner. Excuse me. So, Dorian, what's the deal? You are making way too much of this, Kevin. Oh, I don't think so. Because you were the only one with her after she went to pieces with us at land fair. And just before she came here to set fire to the banner. Now, the only thing is, the lady you were with today, the lady you've been seeing all these times. She's not my mother. She's someone, someone called Tori. Whole other personality. And I think you knew that all the time. Didn't you? We can't stay here forever, Tori. A face is whole. The police will be here any minute. Yeah, thanks to you, but they're not gonna catch me. There's nowhere left to go. Oh, well, that's what you think. <laughs> Cops would never think of drenching the sewer in Queen Victoria, would they? You're not serious. I am very serious. We are going to stay down there until the cops leave. Tori, come on, think this thing through. Be smart. Where can you go? Just to wait and see. You know something, Mr. Cowboy? You're going to start wishing you stayed in that closet. You and me were going someplace where they're never going to find you. For the first time. Move it. 